joining us on, and then if everybody would go ahead and take out their copy of God's Word and turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we'll be using a good bit of scripture, but instead of making you hop all the way around Acts and in some other places, we'll have that on the screens behind me today. And please, don't forget, don't forget, I know you got it highlighted and circled and and, and nobody's allowed to touch that day, but don't forget that next Sunday is National Back to Church Sunday. That's right, it's our outdoor multiply church celebration. So all of you that because of various conditions, health situations, we understand, we get it, we want you to continue to make the decision that is the best for your family. It is good to see our numbers in the house growing each and every week. And But no matter, no matter uh, what decision, all, everybody, everybody on campus at the Concord location, Davidson, you'll be on site in Davidson, but at the Concord location across the street at the village, you can stay in your car with the air conditioning on, you can bring a lawn chair, you can, uh, uh, just uh, diff- different options and lots of free stuff. Who doesn't want free stuff as we fully step into the next season as Multiply Church, one of the spiritual fathers of the house, Pastor Rick is going to be here. I was texting back, back and forth with Pastor Rick, uh, my predecessor who pastored this church for over 13 years, and I was texting back and forth with Pastor Rick yesterday, and he has, uh, my goodness, he's got a word for us. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it, and and so um, it's just going to be an amazing weekend of celebration. The Multiply Blessing, the Multiply Blessing, week two in this series, Genesis 128, as this scripture comes up on the screen. Let's all, let's all declare this. This is not just a written word. This is a spoken word. It's important not that we just read the word, but that we speak the word. Sometimes when we speak the word, can I teach this? I didn't have this in my notes. Can I teach this? God didn't write the world in the, into existence And he didn't read the world into existence. Those are important. He spoke the world into existence through his word. And so it's important that we learn to study the word, to read the word, to write the word. But it is very important. I would say maybe, maybe, just throw this out. So I had, this is like off the top of my head. Maybe it's more important to speak the word. That we declare, we declare the word, we prophesy the word, and we speak things that are not as if they are. And even though you may not operate in the gift of prophecy, you can still have a prophetic voice when you join your voice with the voice of the Spirit and begin to declare things over your family, begin to declare things over your job, begin to declare things over your children. I didn't plan on preaching this early, but there's something here. We need to step in. You are a declarer you have declaration in you let's speak the word of God Genesis 128 are you ready at every location and those joining at home and God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and I speak that multiplication anointing over you and over our church as we step in to this season I believe with all my heart that God wants to bless you. God, God, wants, to, God wants to bless you. I know that, I know that's like that, that seems like an exciting thing to, to say, and it seems like it would be an automatic amen, right? But it's not, and it's not because I don't know God, I just know me. And, and sometimes, sometimes I feel like God wants to bless me, but sometimes I don't feel very blessable. Are you with me? But, but God wants to bless us. Nobody was twisting God's arm. Nobody, no, nobody, nobody was forcing God. This is God's first, the very first covenant blessing that God releases on humanity. God wants to bless you. It's God's will that you're fruitful. And God has a heart to multiply you. But I want to I preach a, a word today that's going to seem, it's going to seem at first like it doesn't go with multiply. Have you, have you experienced that in your life, that you got a word from the Lord, but what you're walking through doesn't, doesn't seem to go together like, God, I thought I heard you, but what I'm walking through doesn't seem to get, I, wanna, I, I believe that the Lord is going to show us something about our lives, about our nation, about the state of the church universal, and about our 
local body. Here's the word that I want to preach. I want to preach to you about scattered. I want to preach to you about scattered. Have you found yourself in the past five or six months feeling a little bit scattered at times? Have you? Let me ask it a little more specifically. Have you had, have you had a mission that you needed to accomplish just in the other room? You're in the kitchen. You're like, I need to go get something in the living room. And so you lay out your plan. You've got your mission. You've got your goal. You walk into the living room. You step into the living room and you look around and you say something like this. Why am I in the living room? My, I have forgotten. I did that the other day. I'm like, oh, I got to get this. I got to go upstairs. And I was just, it wasn't like I was outside. I was at the bottom of the stairs. And I made it to the top of the stairs. And I stood at the top of the stairs. I said, I have no idea why I'm at the top of the stairs. So I just turned around. Scat, scattered. Scattered. Have you, have you had this happen? Have you, been, have you been on a Zoom call with your boss? And you're trying to look engaged? And you're trying to look interested and you're actually trying to contribute to the meeting. And the small children behind you are not cooperating with the whole meeting situation. And so what begins as a discussion begins to escalate a little bit. It's hard. Can I just, can I just tell you it's hard to threaten small children and impress your boss at the same time. If you felt that, if you felt and just felt just a little bit scattered. If you had this happen, if you... Somebody texts you and you're texting them back. And it is a well thought out response. And then you get another notification on your phone and you click over to that notification and then somebody walks in the room and you begin to engage in conversation with that person that walked in the room and an hour later you just get a question mark text from the original person that texted you and you're like, what in the world? And you look down at your phone and you never sent the original text message that you had typed out. Scat scattered, scattered. Lots of conflicting information scattered. Who do I believe scattered? What problem do I even attack first scattered? What's going on in our world, in the church, and in, in my life? I'm trying to make sense of all of this. And, and, and I think that God has a word for us. Before I get to Acts, I want to back up to June 4th, 2019. June 4th, 2019, we were in our creative room, some of the staff and I, and we were in a time of prayer, and we were just seeking the Lord and asking the Lord to speak to us. And, and the Lord gave us what I believe is a, a prophetic word, and I want to put part of that on the, on the screen. And this is what we felt like the Lord was saying. The Lord said to us on June 4th of last year, I'm building something that is multicolored and multifaceted, but it fits together. And he said, said this phrase, I am commissioning a renewed Antioch. And when you think that something looks like a wall or a barrier, keep going. It's not a wall. It's a cloud. It's the cloud of my presence. The cloud of my presence will lead you through all seeming barriers. But I want to focus on that phrase for now. I am commissioning a renewed Antioch. And so we were starting to get excited. A renewed Antioch. That's awesome. We started looking around. Does anybody know what a renewed Antioch is? No, we didn't know what a renewed Antioch was. And, and so we, even a bunch of Bible, Bible scholars, and we're like, well, well uh, what was the original Antioch? And we didn't know a whole lot about the original Antioch. So we started having to study because sometimes when God speaks to you, initially it doesn't lead to the answer. It leads to you diving in a little bit more and having to study a little bit more and lean into the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we began to study, well, what was, what was Antioch? Where was Antioch? So... Let's go all the way. Let's begin with the end in mind. That's a good place to begin, right? If you want to know where you're going, it's good to type in the proper destination on your GPS. So this is beginning with the end in mind. God was saying, we felt like he was saying, I am commissioning a renewed Antioch. And now let's back up to the birthplace of the church. The birthplace of the church was Jerusalem. To understand the birthplace of the church, let's go to Acts 1.8, where God says this, Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem. Say Jerusalem. Throughout Judea. Say Judea. In Samaria. Say Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. Say to the ends of the earth that fast and to the ends of the earth and so that is the promise but it all started it all started in Jerusalem 
And so this promise got fulfilled, and, and, and on the day of Pentecost, see what happened? Pentecost was a festival. It was a feast of the harvest, and there were, there were all different tribes and tongues and nationalities that were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate, but they were Jewish people or Jewish heritage, uh, and they were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate this festival. And there was about 120 of the disciples that were in the upper room, and God poured out the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other tongues, and, and it was, which we believe was the initial physical evidence of that outpouring. They walked out onto the street, and they're, they're still speaking. The, the disciples are still speaking in this other language, and everybody's looking at them, and, and they're saying, these guys, it's, it's like 9 in the morning, but they're, but they're drunk. And here's what's, here's what's kind of interesting about that. Um, if you've ever been around somebody that had one too many or were slightly intoxicated, there are numerous signs that you can look at, right, and say they have probably consumed a little bit too much alcohol, but never in my life at a, at a baseball game or anything else have I looked at somebody that consumed too much alcohol and they were speaking another language eloquently. Usually they can't even speak their own language have you ever known somebody that they, that they had too much to drink and they're like, that joker doesn't know a lick of French and all of a sudden they're speaking French fluently? Like, I don't know why, I don't know why they assumed like, oh, they, but because, because sometimes here's what happens when we don't understand what God's doing. We look for excuses and we assign wrong things to what God is doing instead of leaning in to what God is doing. So Peter stands up, Peter, the same guy that denied Jesus. He was so scared uh, to, to, to label himself as a follower of Christ that he denied being a Christ follower to a junior high girl just several days before. Now he is standing up in front of thousands of people and proclaiming the gospel message. It says that day alone, 3,000 people got saved, and it was the birthday of the church. That's quite a start. Y'all, that's a good church plant. Pastor Wes is planting Multiply Church Harrisburg here in a couple of months. I guarantee that if Pastor Wes had 3,000 people on that first Sunday, he would be slightly excited. Can we believe for that, by the way? Why not? Let's do. And so it all started in Jerusalem. So let's follow, let's keep following the progression of what happened to the church. And so then you've got to go, so, so the, the early church in Jerusalem, they were enjoying favor, they were enjoying, it said, the Bible says, and people were being added daily to the fellowship, they were growing. Uh, it wasn't without its challenges, they were certainly, there was certainly external persecution and internal conflict. Hello, sometimes we read the book of Acts with rose-colored glasses and say everything was perfect in the book of Acts. I don't know what book of Acts you're reading, but that is not the book of Acts. There is always, there are always both external and internal challenges because God's beautiful, wonderful, glorious church is made up of imperfect people. Can you say amen? And so if you're looking for the perfect church, you're not going to find it at CFA or Multiply or any other church because we're imperfect people, but we're seeking to follow Jesus together. And so in Acts chapter 8, it says this. And there arose on that day, on what day? This was the stoning of Stephen. Okay, the stoning of Stephen. So there was one amazing preacher that they brought into the uh, public arena and, and basically and threw stones, cast stones at him and killed him. And so that's the day they're talking about. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered. They were all scattered. So do you see, do you see what's going on here? The church, the church was, was good. The church was doing fine. Can I, can I read between the lines a little bit and say that maybe even, maybe even in the midst of some conflict that they were growing a little bit comfortable and they, they enjoyed their Jerusalem promise because a lot of good things were happening in Jerusalem. And maybe, that maybe their vision got turned inward a little bit and say, say, God is the God of Jerusalem and we like what's going on in Jerusalem. And so then there was persecution. There was persecution and that persecution led to scattering. I, I understand it's not an exact parallel, but can you see a little bit about what is going on in our world today? 
May, church, make, make no mistake. This is, this is a season of, it's not, it's not trendy to be a Christian right now. Have you found that out? It's not the popular stance to stand for Jesus. It's not the popular stance to stand for morality. It's not the popular stance. And so there has been, through this virus, through different things, a little bit of time of persecution. And because of this persecution, right now we can feel, we can feel, we can feel, look around this auditorium. Physically, right now, we are a little bit scattered. We're not used to rows being removed. We're not used to, to six feet in between us. We're not used to, uh, thank goodness for our online platforms, but we're not used to all, all of you being scattered. And so how many conversations and text messages have I, you know, just had of pastor we're watching every week online. We wish we could be there so bad, but we have this situation in our family and it feels like my heart sometimes feels scattered because I know we're together, but we can't see each other. And I think we're walking through a season as a church globally of being scattered. And what I want to do is I don't want to miss what the Holy Spirit is doing because the Holy Spirit works in every season. And it's the same God that worked in the Jerusalem season that's going to work in the scattering season. And if we can lean into what the Holy Spirit is doing right now and understand this biblically, then we can lean into what the Holy Spirit is doing right now in our church and in your life and it won't make it easier but it'll make more sense you hear me I hope y'all can I just say this I hope we get this right because I want to do this again <laughs> you know when you punish your kids you, you correct your kids you discipline your kids you would like to not have to correct them for the same things over and over and over again. Like, can we find a new way to get in trouble? Sometimes we're just like, and so this is a hard season that we're walking through. But I want to take full advantage of it so that we can get on the other side. So we got to ask, what's God doing? What's God doing during this season of scattering? Well, let's keep leaning into the scripture. What was God doing during this season of scattering in the book of Acts? Number one, God was turning followers of Jesus into missionaries for Jesus. My goodness, I feel that. God was turning followers of Jesus into missionaries for Jesus. Watch this. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and 4. And they were all scattered. And then the message translation says it like this. Forced to leave home base, the followers of Jesus all became missionaries. Do you know that God has a divine appointment for you during this season of being scattered? There are relationships that you will enter into. There will be situations. There will be people that you will come in contact with that it feels like persecution, but I'm telling you it's a divine appointment. During this season of scattering, I love the way it says that the followers, the followers all became missionaries. Do you know what God's doing in your life right now? He is prodding the mess out of your comfort zone. Can you say a collective amen? And he's pushing you. He's pushing you because you were not born just to be a follower of Jesus. You were born to be a missionary for Jesus. You were born to be an evangelist. You say, oh, no, I wasn't, Pastor. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. I promise you, all of you have evangelist in you. It may not be with a microphone. It may not be what your preconceived notions, but you're all evangelists. Do you know what an evangelist is? An evangelist is simply something that has experienced something really good in their life, and they care about the people around them, so they want to share it. And you've been an evangelist. You've shared a recipe. You've shared a recipe. Laura, I would like you to share that recipe <laughs> for that for that cake that you made for my wife's birthday, if you, could sh if you could be an evangelist for some pound cake, that would bless my soul. We've all shared, we've shared, you've shared more YouTube videos in the, in the past six months. You've said something like this, hey, did you see this series on Netflix? I've done it, I've done it too. Right now, I am an evangelist. There's a, there's a, a, a show on Amazon Prime called The World's Toughest Race, Bear Grylls. Any Bear Grylls fans out there? So, so Bear Grylls, who actually came to Jesus through Alpha, 
pretty cool story there. But Bear Grylls and, and Pastor, Pastor Gwen and her team lead, lead Alpha, amazing ministry. Uh, uh, but but uh, Bear Grylls, they're racing 11 days across the entire island of Fiji. I mean, these world-class, so one of the, one of the teams is, uh, y'all remember the Iron, Iron Man, Iron Woman triathletes? Uh, so like they, they do, so a triathlon, an Ironman triathlon, triathlon is, is uh, swimming, biking, and running. An Ironman is like swim two miles, bike 100 miles, and, and then run a marathon, right? Like not within the course of your lifetime, like actually within, within one day. And, and so there's one, there was one triathlete. So the world's toughest race, one of their little taglines is we eat triathletes for lunch. And they do. There's this team of four, uh, four triathletes from the United States, and they're like middle of the pack. They're like, there's, there's this one triathlete, cow, they call him Cowboy Bob. Uh, a cowboy is somebody in the, in the triathlon world that does 50 triathlons in 50 days. And he did that in 50 different states. And at this world's toughest race, he's like, he's average. He's middle, he's middle of the pack. I mean, it's, it's like they're, they're canoeing and then they're, they're mountain climbing, rock climbing up the face of waterfalls. And then they're, they're hiking and they're biking and they're all, all of these different things. And they're sleeping for like two hours at a time. There's one group on there, one of my favorite group is 68 and above. I love that group. There's six, 68, four people that are 68 and above. There's a, another guy, his, his son. There's a father and two daughters that are doing it together. There's twin girls from the nation of India that are doing it together. There's, there's a, a father and son, and the father is in early stages of, of Alzheimer's, and, and they're doing it together with other, two other people, four-man teams. But, but I've been like uh, in a conversation, like we could be talking about anything. Uh, we talk about the weather, and I'm like, hey, have you seen that new show that's on Amazon? Like, I, because I've, I've become really into this show and just naturally out of an outflow of my life begin to share. Being an evangelist, being an evangelist, y'all, is just sharing naturally of the outflow of what God is already doing in your life. So let me give you four quick practical ways how you can be a missionary for Jesus. Number one is be a Matthew. Be a Matthew. So what Matthew did when Matthew found Jesus, Matthew threw a party and Matthew invited Christian friends and non-Christian friends to his party. How cool is that? Can I just say your tribes are fantastic places to throw Matthew parties. Invite some Christian people to your tribe. Invite some non-Christian people to your tribe. Because people today want to belong before they believe. Number two, you can be a woman at the well. Be a woman at the well. This is simply telling someone what Jesus did for you. You don't have to be a theologian, a Bible scholar. You don't have to have all of the answers. You're just telling them, I don't know, but I don't know about everything. But I'm telling you, I used to be this way, and now I'm this way. All of us have a testimony, and if we have a testimony, then we can be an evangelist. Number three, be an Andrew. Be an Andrew. Andrew was just always bringing people to Jesus. He was a person that, that every week when he walked into church, he had, somebody, he had a VIP with him. Bring somebody, invite somebody, invite, be, it, be an online Andrew, share this, text somebody. You need to hear this word. And then number four, be a Paul. Be a Paul, share the gospel with somebody. I think if we're all honest, that's the one that we feel a little bit inadequate to do, right? So how do I explain the gospel? How do I explain Jesus? How do I explain salvation? In the next several weeks, we are going to unveil a tool that we believe that God is going to use to help you to be an evangelist, for you to be a personal soul winner. And, and, and so we'll, we'll, walk that, we'll walk that out and walk through that. But I believe that. I believe that with all my heart that God is turning followers of Jesus into missionaries for Jesus. What else was God doing during this season of scattering? God was changing the container to accommodate the size of the promise. So let's go back to Acts chapter 1-8, because remember, things were good in Jerusalem, y'all. Why, why would we change? We're in Jerusalem. We're growing in Jerusalem. We have favor in Jerusalem. Good things are happening to Jerusalem. But Acts chapter 1-8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of 
the earth. That's Acts 1.8. Now let's connect the dots to Acts chapter 8, verse 1. It says, and there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were scattered. There arose a persecution and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Do you see that? That the fulfillment of the promises of Acts 1-8 was tied to the persecution of Acts 8-1. Can I tell you that the thing that you are walking through in your life right now that you want rid of, it's persecution, it's hard, it's relational conflict, it's my job, it's something. God will use that if you will allow him. God will use the suffering and the persecution in your life to expand the promise in your life. God used this. God is using the scattering right now. You've heard the phrase, the church has left the building, that as we go out, the promise is expanding. The promise is getting bigger. And so now we're, we're in Judea and we're in Samaria. But don't stop there. We're not done yet because now in Acts 11, it says this. Now those who were scattered... Those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen, who on coming to, here we go, here we go, we're, you're on vacation, and it's been a long time coming, and you see the sign, you see the first, you see the, you see the destination, 12 miles ahead, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Greek speaking non-Jews preaching to preaching the Lord Jesus Christ and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number turned to the Lord so watch this God's promise was bigger than Jerusalem God's promise was bigger than Judea God's promise was bigger than Sumeria God cares about God loves this church but God's promise is bigger than this church God loves you but his promise is bigger than you what if somebody hadn't told you about Jesus what if somebody what if that preacher in Kennerdale Pennsylvania on his way down Pine Hill didn't stop at my grandparents house what if he was just satisfied with his congregation but what if Reverend Gray didn't stop at, at, at my grandparents house decades ago and they hadn't said yes to Jesus I wouldn't be standing here today you wouldn't be standing and you wouldn't be sitting where you are today except somebody cared somebody saw beyond Jerusalem somebody saw beyond their needs somebody saw beyond the city to a lost and dying world and said the promise is bigger we got to get the gospel so God if you can use this persecution if you can use this scattering get me to Antioch you say what was Antioch Antioch was a it's a pretty influential city it was the third largest city of the Roman Empire it was extremely polytheistic there were temples of Artemis and Hercules and to Castillo, and, and that was dedicated to the imperial cult. Y'all, if, if you were starting a church, you wouldn't have picked Antioch. Antioch. Antioch had no place for God, no place for Jesus. Their political systems were anti-God. Their school systems were anti-God. Every, everything about the city was anti god God, and it was divided. When I say divided, I don't mean there was tension in the city. I mean it was literally divided. When it was first built, it was constructed physically as a divided city with a literal wall to keep Syrians and Greeks apart. And it was in an area and it was in a city that didn't care anything about God, where it wasn't cool to be a Christian, that was polytheistic, that was divided in every way, that God said, that's the city that I want to reach. That's where I'm going to put my power. And do you see, what if, what if, what if God is doing the same thing today? What if God is scattering us for a season? What if we all be became missionaries what if we not only cared about Jerusalem but but got eyes for a vision that's bigger and beyond and what if God is already brooding over Antioch and what if God is involved in all of this in Acts chapter 11 it describes Antioch as a church where unbelievers were reached 
a church of God's favor, a church of God's grace, a church where a great many came to know the Lord, a church of strong preaching and teaching, a church of education and training, a church where they actually received a new name. Did you know it was in Antioch that they went from being called followers of the way to the first time being called Christians? A church of the supernatural, a church of prayer and fasting, a church of overflowing generosity, a church of worship, a church that was multicultural and multiracial, a church of sending out to reach the ends of the earth. And now suddenly it all starting to make just a little bit of sense why a year and a half ago that God spoke to us prophetically before a pandemic was ever on the scene and said, I am commissioning a renewed Antioch. That's you, Multiply. That's you. That's you. That's the season we're stepping into is a renewed Antioch. What does Antioch do? Antioch disciples disciples who disciple disciples. Do you see that? It disciples disciples who disciple disciples. What happens in Antioch? Antioch plants churches that plants churches. That's what we believe with all of our heart that God is doing, that when we plant multiply Harrisburg, they're not just dependent on mama for everything, that we are gonna plant multiply Harrisburg and multiply Harrisburg is gonna grow. And then they're gonna plant multiply Mint Hill or, or multiply Oakboro and they're gonna begin to reach out. We're believing for Lake Norman that they're not just gonna be Lake Norman, but they're gonna plant in Statesville or they're gonna plant, they're gonna plant and we are believing for a multiply move of God that's a renewed Antioch. Scattered. We're living in scattered times. Sometimes my emotions feel scattered. My thoughts feel scattered. All of this feels very scattered. But what if, what if God's in the scattered? What if he's in the scattered? I got, I got to tell you one more thing. I found two places in the book of Acts where it talked about followers being scattered. And one, one had a multiply effect, but the other didn't. If you go to Acts chapter 5, um, it was common in that day for, for people like this to r rise up all over the place. There would be a, a popular philosopher or a, a popular a zealot or a political figure and and while they were living they might have a message that everybody would run to them and fall they would follow them and it would even be sometimes people claiming to be the messiah i'm the messiah and they would they would follow and so they would gain all of these all of these followers and in acts chapter 5 it says this there was a there was a guy by the name of theudas and he rose up and it says this in acts 5 36 theudas was killed and all who followed him were scattered and came to nothing and I want to contrast that for just a moment with Acts 8 4 that says the followers of Jesus who were scattered all became missionaries here you have these two popular figures of the day these two teachers one was killed and his followers because when who you follow is killed in front of you, it forces you to look inward and say, do I really believe what I believe? Theudas, I'm with you. I love what you're teaching, Theudas. Let's go, Theudas. You were killed, Theudas. Bye, Theudas. It forces you when, when you're when everything that you followed, when everything that you put your life into goes away, it forces you to confront, do I really believe that? Do I really believe that? So compare the followers of Theudas that were like, I don't want anything to do with this, I'm done, I'm going back to, gonna try and go back to my life, to the followers of Jesus who let's just take the 12. Let's just take the 12. When they watched Jesus be crucified 
on that cross and they were persecuted. And so they had to know that probably that same persecution is going to lead to about the same result that it led to Jesus. And for 11 out of the 12, it did because Peter was crucified upside down. Andrew was crucified. Thomas was pierced through with spears of the four soldiers. And a lot of this is not in the Bible, but, it, but it's uh, Jewish historians tell us what happened to these disciples. Matthew was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Barth- Bartholomew uh, met his death as a martyr of the gospel. James was stoned and clubbed to death. Simon the Zealot refused a sacrifice to the sun god and he was killed. Matthias, death by burning. John was the only one of the 12 apostles who according to church history was not martyred and they tried to. The story is that they threw him in a boiling vat of oil and God saved him. So what, what was it? What was, can I ask, can I, let me just go right to the heart, right to the heart, right to the heart. Let me, let me ask it strong today. I need to ask this strong to somebody who's watching online. Who are you following? Who are you following? Are you following culture? Are you following popular thought? Are you following a celebrity? Are you following money? See, that's what Theudas represented. It represented all the latest and the greatest because that system will die. And it says that those who follow that system will come to nothing. Who are you following? Who are you following? Are you following a man? Are you following a woman? Are you following a system? Or are you following Jesus? I believe that that is what the nation wide church, that that's what the worldwide church is facing right now is who are you following? Do you really believe what you believe? Are you all in? Would you die for your faith? Would you give it it all? Who are you following? Are you a follower of Theudas? Are you a follower of Jesus? With heads bowed and eyes closed. Can I ask it? Can I ask it this way? To somebody that's watching and somebody that's tuning in, somebody that's in the house today, and you say, Pastor, I I don't know. I don't feel like I'm a, a follower of Jesus. Let me ask it this way. Do you have something in your life that you would give your life for? Do you have something that you're living for that's worth dying for? And maybe you would say, Pastor, I don't, but I want to. I want to believe in something. I I, I want to have that that passion in my life. I want to follow this man, Jesus, that is so worthy of me following him that I would would give up anything. I would give up everything for him. And so with heads bowed and eyes closed, and this is a little bit different today because Jesus will change your life, but in some ways it will also cost you everything. So if you've never said yes to him, but you want to say yes to Jesus right now on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand and just make that declaration. One, two, three, just lift your hand high in the house. That's me. I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to be a follower of Jesus. Now, before we pray, I want to ask I want to ask the followers of Jesus. Has Theudas tried to make his way into your life? Have other things tried to distract you during this time? Will you reaffirm and just say, with all that I am, with all that I, I, with all that I want to be, with everything in my power, I want to be a full out, full on follower of Jesus. If that's you, would you just lift your hand and say, that's me. I just reaffirm that dedication. I reaffirm that commitment. Pastor, I'm all in. I don't want to be a follower of the systems of this world. I don't want to be a follower of culture. I don't want to be, whether it's popular or not, I will make a stand for righteousness. I will make a stand for the things of God. If my family rejects me, if those around reject me, I want to be a follower of Jesus. If Jesus died for me, then I am all in for him. I want to be a follower of Jesus. Can we all just pray this prayer out loud right now? Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I come to you. And I ask Jesus that you come into my heart and come into my life so that I can live wide awake to the love of God 
and fully alive to my purpose in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And now I bless you. I bless you to thrive during this season of persecution. I bless you that in this season, and I speak this over you right now, this season of scattering will not last much longer, but you have to take advantage of what God is doing during this season of scattering. It will come to an end. And if we are missionaries during this season, then God will use this to multiply his blessings in his favor and the people that say yes to Jesus on the other side of this. It's a short window, church. So we step into it with passion. We step into it with anointing. We step into it with calling. And we say that we will walk through this season of scattering and we will come out, multiply on the other side in the name of Jesus. And if you receive that, can you say amen? Amen. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, we believe that's the most important decision you could make in your entire life. But it's just the beginning. Let us know by texting ALIVE to 94000. We have some resources we'd love to give you to help you as you begin your journey. Thanks for liking, commenting, and sharing. Listen, come back next week and bring a friend as we continue to love Jesus and change the world.